thermal equilibrium. Eh? Thermal equilibrium. Thermal equilibrium between two objects in thermal contact is achieved if there is no net flows of heat between two objects that are in thermal equilibrium. And this happens when uh, the two objects have the same temperature. Now, what does this mean? Anyway, I will show you later. So the thermal equilibrium can be summarized as there is no net flows of heat between two objects that are in thermal equilibrium. Two objects in thermal equilibrium have the same temperature. Okay, now this is what you should write in your test or exam. This, this, this summary, okay? In the exam, they ask you what does it mean by thermal equilibrium, and then this is what you should write. That is thermal equilibrium, uh, but what does it mean by that, okay? What does it mean by that? Okay, now, let's say you have two objects, okay? Uh, let's call this object A and this object B. And the temperature of these two objects are not the same. This one 500 degrees Celsius and this, is, this one is 10 degrees Celsius. If two objects are in thermal context, there's a transverse of energy. Okay, there's a transverse of energy. So energy will transfer from this object A to object B and from object B to object A at the same time. Okay, but the rate of transfer, rate of transfer means how fast the heat transfer, okay? So the rate of transfer from object with higher temperature to lower temperatures object, uh, the rate is higher, means it's faster, faster. For example, this one, uh, 500 degrees Celsius to 10 degrees Celsius, uh, the transfer is 1000 joule per second, means in every one second that is 1000 joules of heat energy transfer from uh, object A to object B. But at the same time, there are uh, this uh, heat transfer from the lower temperature object to the higher temperature object. For example, okay, so this one is 200 joule per second. Joule per second means how many joules in one second. Huh? So there are uh, 1000 joules of transfers of energy from object A to object B in one second. And then uh, at the same time, one second, there are 200 joules of heat energy from uh, object B to object A. A, this is B. Okay, so so which one is faster? Which one is faster, A to B or B to A? The transfers of energy, A to B, yeah? Okay, A to B is faster, okay? Uh, so even though there are transfer uh, energy from both sides, okay? A to B, B to A, but uh, from A to B is faster because the temperatures of A is higher than B, yeah? Okay? And in this case, uh, we can see that there's a net flows of heat, net flows of heat of 800 joule per second, right? So this one, 800 joules from A to B and 200 joule from B to A. So there's a net flows of 800, uh, 1000 minus 200. Uh, uh, so there's a net flows of heat. Uh, so the rate of heat transfer is higher from higher temperature to lower temperature. And therefore there is a net heat flow from object with higher temperature to object with lower temperature. Okay, this one is before the thermal equilibrium is achieved. Okay, now when there's a net flows of heat energy, then object A, the energies of object A will increase or decrease. There's a net flows of 800 joule from left to right. So object A, object A, the energy will increase or decrease? Yes, it will decrease, right? Because, because uh, the energy go to B. There are 800 joule per second that go to B from A to B. So the, the thermal energy will decrease. And if the thermal energy decrease, the temperature will also decrease. So the temperatures of this uh, 500 degrees Celsius will decrease, okay? This object B, it receives energy, right? It receives energy, then uh, its temperature will increase. Uh? Temperature will increase, okay? So, so this is what happens uh, during the flows of heat energy, okay? So uh, one of the object, the temperature will decrease. Another object, the temperature will increase, okay? And until both of these objects achieve the same temperature, the, the temperatures are the same, eh? okay? So if the temperatures are the same, okay, something like this. Let's say the final temperature is 200 degrees Celsius. So this one decreased to 200 degrees Celsius. This one increased to 200 degrees Celsius. Now the temperatures of these two objects are the same. And let's see the flows of the energy. Okay, left to right 500 joule per second and right to left is also 500 joule per second, okay? means that the, the heat flow at the same speed, left to right and right to left, okay? The speed of the flows of the heat energy are the same. If the flows of the heat energy are the same, then what is the net flow? The net flow is equal to 
zero, right? The net flow is equal to zero. If the net flow is equal to zero, then we say this is thermal equilibrium because there's no net flow, eh? no net flow or the net flow is equal to zero. And then this is called thermal equilibrium. So is there any, any flows of heat energy? Yes, there are still flows of heat energy from left to right and right to left, okay? But the rate are the same. 500 Joule from left to right and 500 Joule from right to left. So therefore the net flow is equal to zero. Then we say they, are, they achieve the equilibrium, okay? Equilibrium or thermal equilibrium. So this is, uh, in this case, the thermal equilibrium is achieved and the net flow equal to zero and the temperature become the same. So that is what does it mean by thermal equilibrium, eh? okay? The net flows of heat energy is equal to zero. And this happens, this occurs when the temperatures of the two objects in thermal contact are the same, the temperature are the same, okay? Applications of thermal equilibrium. The first one is oven. Let's say initially you put the bun into an oven, okay? The oven, the temperature is higher. There's a heat transfer from the ovens to the bun. Okay, the net flow, uh, net flow from the ovens to the bun until the buns uh, have the same temperature as the oven. Okay, let's say the oven is 300 degrees Celsius. Okay, so there's a heat transfer from the ovens to the bun. Uh, if the temperatures of the oven is 300 degrees Celsius, then thermal equilibrium will achieve uh, when the bun also re uh, achieve 300 degrees Celsius. Okay, let's say this one, the temperature 300 degrees Celsius. So uh, thermal equilibrium achieved when this is also 300 degrees Celsius. Eh? So when food such as meat or cakes put into oven, the heat of the oven is transferred into the food. Eh? This process will continue until the food is in thermal equilibrium with the air in the oven. This happens when the temperatures of the food is equal to the temperatures of the air in the oven. Uh, refrigerators, okay, refrigerators. This just now for, for the oven is we want the heat uh the food right okay but for refrigerators we want to cool we want to cool the food and this is also the same okay so when food is put in the refrigerator the heat from the food is transferred into the air of the refrigerator why why there's a heat transfer from the food to the air of the refrigerator because they haven't achieved thermal equilibrium okay the temperature is not the same they, they haven't achieved thermal equilibrium then there's a net flows of heat eh? okay and this process will continue until the temperatures of the food equal to the temperatures of the refrigerator. Uh, then thermal equilibrium achieved, uh, then there's no heat flow, no net heat flow, okay, between the food and the air of the refrigerator. Okay, so this is one of one of the applications of a thermal equilibrium. Eh? Thermometer. So if you want to measure the temperatures of an object or a patient's body. You must place the thermometer in contact, thermal contact with the patients. Okay. If both the body temperatures of the patients and that of the mercury in the clinical thermometer have reached thermal equilibrium, then the temperatures of the thermometer is the same as the body temperature. Okay. So, uh, so we let the body has therm uh, thermal equilibrium with the thermometer. We, we must in contact with the body for some time. Eh? Okay. Sometimes we take a few minutes. So you take a few minutes to let the thermometer achieve thermal equilibrium with the body. Then the temperatures of the thermometer is the same as the temperatures of the body. So when you read the readings of the thermometer, then you will get the temperatures of the body. So this is also one of the applications of thermal equilibrium. Okay, differences between thermal energy and temperature. Thermal energy is a form of energy, but temperature is just a measure of the degree of hotness. Eh? Okay, it's not energy, it's not object, it's just how hot an object. Uh, thermal energy, we use a uh, unit Joule, but temperature, we use a unit Kelvin or degree Celsius. And uh, by definition, thermal energy is the sum of the kinetic and potential energy of the particle. The particles can be molecules or atoms. Eh? Then temperature, temperature is the measures of the average kinetic energies of the particles. Eh? Okay. And thermal energy is a derived quantity, but uh, temperature is a base quantity. Okay. Now make sure that you remember this. So this may be asked in your essay questions. Okay. The differences between thermal energy and temperature. Okay. Thermal properties. Thermal properties, uh, as I told you just now, okay, is how the properties of an object responds to the heat change or this uh, temperature change. 
Okay, that's called the thermal properties. For example, volume of liquid and also gas. Eh? So volume of liquids or gas increase when its temperature increase. Uh, liquid or gas, or, and even solid, eh? solid will increase a little. So that's the first uh, thermometry properties that you need to know. Second, for gas, okay, the pressures of gas in a closed system. Closed system means that the air is not free to move in and out, okay? So let's say you have a box, okay, and you have a hole here, the air can go in and out. Uh, then this is an open system. This is an open system, okay? But if the air is not allowed to move in and out, then it's a closed system, okay? If you close it, then it's a closed system. So for a, clo for a closed system, if the temperature increase, okay, the temperature increase, uh, the pressure increase. That is for closed system. For open system, uh, temperature increase, uh, pressure decrease. Is the opposite. Eh? It's the opposite. Eh? So for closed system, but uh, uh, what's important here is the closed system. Okay, temperature increase, pressure increase. Eh? For closed system, okay, and then uh, resistance of metals. Uh, when the temperature increase, the resistance increase. Uh, higher resistance, a uh, higher temperature, higher resistance. That's for metals, but for diode is the other way around. Eh? Okay, but uh, you haven't learned diode yet. You're going to learn diode in form five. Eh? Okay, the last one is EMF of thermocouples. Eh? What's thermocouple? Okay, let's say you have some ice eh, in the beakers. This is ice in the beakers, and then you have an uh, some hot water. You heat the water until it boils. Okay hot water if you put a wire connect from the ice to the hot water and then you connect this to uh, let's say a galvanometer okay the galvanometer is to measure current huh? then you will find that there is some current flow okay flow from the high temperatures uh, high temperatures uh, object to the low temperatures object okay this uh, phenomenon is called thermocouple thermocouple okay because when there's a difference of uh, temperature it would generate emf electromotive force so electromotive force is the energy that move the uh, charge eh? okay energy that move the charge that cause current so emf or electromotive force is produced when the two ends of a wire have different temperature if the temperature is not the same then there's a heat flow but um, this is not obvious if the the difference of the temperature is not big okay let's just five degrees celsius difference or 10 degrees celsius then uh, it, it's very difficult for us to detect the current but if the temperature the difference of the temperature is very big like for example uh, uh, 200 degrees celsius with zero degrees celsius uh, or, or, or 100 degrees celsius with uh, zero degrees celsius then you can detect the currents okay you can detect the currents between these two wire and that's called thermocouple yeah, thermocouple. So this is the thermometry properties that you need to know. Eh?